Today on IODP Expedition 342, Newfoundland. Right now we're at the top of Hidden Peak. We're at about a little over 11,000 feet at the top of Little Cottonwood Canyon. See this beautiful glacial valley we have behind us. And this has been our venue for the last three or four days to talk about the, uh, the science that we've been accomplishing over the last three years since we sailed. Expedition 342 hit everything from 15.5 million years ago to 120 million years ago. We got everything. Uh, we may have missed a couple million years in the upper Eocene, but other than that, we pretty much covered a tremendous amount of time at very high stratigraphic resolution and with exquisite geochemical, micropaleontological, and uh, a variety of other records. It's just, it's a stunning record, and we're only just beginning to tap into the potential of, of Expedition 342 materials. I have the very last section of the very last site. Expedition, <laughs> end of expedition. The post-cruise meeting is a really important kind of follow-up phase to the cruise, obviously. It happens about three years after the event, and it's the time when we get together, or the, the crew get together, anybody that's joined the team, and we have a, a rundown of, of what we've done so far. This is the first opportunity for that large scientific team to get together to discuss the state of the art of this expedition and to map out not only where we've been, but more importantly, where we're going with all of this science. So everybody is obviously very excited to show what he or she has been producing over the last couple of years and how that fits in with the other data. So it's a very exciting moment. Well, we may not know exactly what everyone else is doing. That's why it's so wonderful to have such a big community of people here. That's the whole intent of this particular meeting. The cruise itself took, oh, about 10 years to come to fruition of planning, of uh, collecting background information, of having uh, reviews by external panels of uh, kind of our plans. Then there was the cruise itself. That was two months, intensive two months at, at sea. Uh, then there was another period of a couple of months in which we uh, did the first post-cruise meeting. We reported on what we had found on the ship. Uh, we went and collected the samples that all these people are working on. Um, and now there, there's this last sort of phase of a couple of years of intensive work in which we brought together not just the people from the ship, but all these other collaborators to sort of work together on this great adventure of figuring out, you know, this piece of Earth history. You can think of this as having one of those 2,000 piece puzzles. Somebody shook the box, dropped it at the top of the ocean, all the pieces sunk to the bottom. We come along, take a scoop of it, and somehow have to put it back together. So together, we, we're gonna see what we can learn about Antarctic glaciation onset in the Northern Hemisphere. We haven't really had much of a clue about that. Various records show an indication of a decline in the The VRA 23 boundary could be here. Extinctions, the rise of the new Cenozoic lineages. About 1,700 samples. We recovered so much fantastic material. This was such a record-breaking sort of home run of an expedition that, uh, you know, there's a good three, four, maybe even five years lab work down the line. And there's going to be a sort of a growing swell of work following hard on, on the heels of, that, of those early daylighting results. These questions that we're asking are kind of timeless questions uh, as we try to better figure out our place uh, and sense of place here on this planet and how we're affecting these natural cycles and, and modifying those. So how are we affecting the heartbeat of the planet? Well, first we have to figure out the planet's heartbeat and then we can see how we're perturbing them. So the formal part of the meeting is over. This is the informal part. Core on deck. I am so looking forward to this. <laughs> Typically after a conference like this, we go out on a field trip, which is um, a generally a very good experience uh, for geologists who increase their knowledge and their experience. At this intersection, at this light, we're coming up to the mouth of Big Cottonwood Canyon. The geology is very different than what we saw over the last three days. But it also provides a more informal venue for people to talk to each other and especially young people they start to form actually collaborative relationships already so it's a tremendously valuable to have this opportunity to talk
we're asking really big questions. And to really push the limits of our understanding, we have to bring together a really diverse crew. Diverse in terms of methodology, diverse in terms of uh, academic experience and rank, and diverse in terms of the different cultural backgrounds that we can bring together to really expand not only our knowledge of the science, but the knowledge of doing science. Uh, we have developed a lot of new collaborations and scientific relationships. And in particular, we have, we've had so many students at this meeting. Their entire careers may be based on some of the topics that are being studied here. They need to meet all the other people, all the senior researchers in their field and in related fields to make sure that their careers take off. It's the friendships that you make and the collaborations that's the real legacy. I will always have incredibly fond memories of 342. <laughs> it, it's a child's delight. <laughs> Once these papers get out into the mainstream science arena, then other people will look at these and think, wow, these are fantastic records, and then build on that. So it's, it's going to go on forever and ever. And so in that respect, uh, 342 is likely to have this long, hopefully, value for other kinds of scientific questions that we did not think about on the ship. And that we may have gone out and collected samples and not known all the majestic stories that lie in that, it's just mud for God's sakes, but it's mud with wonderful stories embedded in it.